glory to the Lamb. Oh
turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We're going to be reading from verses 8 to 14. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a, the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. There are great words associated with Christmas in the scriptures. We have just read, we, we see the word glory. The scriptures declare that the glory of the Lord shone around them and that the angels sang glory to God in the highest. John said in John 1.14, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Also in John 2.11 we read, where John records, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The, the term glory refers primarily to the visible manifestation of the divine majesty. And the first point I want to make is that in our scripture reading, we see the glory of God and human fear. It says they were filled with fear. The glory of God was a visible manifestation of the invisible but powerful God. The glory of God was revealed in old days, in the Old Testament days, indicating God's presence, his power and his authority. In the Exodus experience, the glory of the Lord appeared to the people in a cloud. And in Exodus 13, 21, we read, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give light, so as to go by day and night. By means of this brilliant and shining manifestation of his presence, God revealed himself to Israel in both grace and judgment. The glory of God is in the form of a cloud and a pillar of fire. And it also came in judgment on the Egyptians. And we see the next, this 14, verses 24 to 25. It says, now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians and he took off their chariot wheels, so they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. When God instructed Moses concerning the building of the tabernacle and the services that were to be conducted in the tabernacle, he declared in Exodus 29, 43, and there I will meet with the children of Israel and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. We also see that Isaiah was to experience an awareness of the universal glory of God in his call, that experience he had in it's recorded in Isaiah chapter 6, and you can read that yourself. But we see there, he, he saw the glory, the manifested glory of God. And in seeing the manifested glory of God, he saw himself. The glory of God was a visible manifestation of his burning presence in Old Testament days. 
It created an attitude of dread and fear and anxiety in the hearts of men and women because they felt unworthy to come into the presence of this holy God. The second thing we see is that Christ came to manifest the glory of God and to bring glory to God. John said, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Jesus, in his great high priestly prayer, as recorded in John 17, said to the Father in John 17, verses 4 to 6, I have glorified you in the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Jesus revealed the grace and truth about God in what he said. Jesus also revealed the grace and truth about God in the works of mercy, kindness, and helpfulness that he did. Jesus also revealed the grace of God supremely in his sacrificial death on the cross. Jesus went to the cross because of the command of the Father and because he wanted to demonstrate to an unbelieving world the greatness of his love for the Father. In John 14, 31, we read, we read, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise and let us go from here. Jesus went to the cross for the joy of the benefit that would accrue to people because of this new revelation of the glory of God. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And the third point I want to make is that the followers of Christ are encouraged to glorify God. The heavenly host praised and sang to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And if we would glorify God in the highest, we must also glorify God here in the presence. If we would glorify God, we must be visible manifestations of his presence in the world today. We must let him live within us in such a way that others can see his grace and his goodness. And there's at least three different ways in which we can glorify God. We can glorify God in our bodies. In 1 Corinthians 6.20 we read, For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The New International Translation says of this verse, Therefore honour God in your body. The Good News Translation translates this phrase as, So use your bodies for God's glory. It is possible for us to glorify God in our bodies because Jesus Christ has come to dwell within us through faith. In Ephesians 3.17, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. We have become the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. 
It is our bodies that we are to glorify God. It's with our bodies we glorify him. People can't physically see God. They, we, don't, we can't physically see Jesus. He's, he's in the presence of the Father right now. So we glorify God with our bodies. So we're not to use our bodies as for any kind of immoral purposes because they have been made for the Lord. We read in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 13 to 14, foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. We are to glorify God by bearing much fruit. And we read that as our Lord declared in John 15, 8. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. And there are at least two kinds of fruit we can experience and by which we can glorify God. We can cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The Holy Spirit has been given to us in order that he might reproduce within us the character and the very nature of Jesus Christ. As we let the Holy Spirit produce the fruit of love, joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control, we will become living exhibitions of what God can do when he is permitted to come and live in the hearts of human beings. We can experience the fruit of the seed sower and by so doing bring glory to God. And we read in Matthew 13 verses 1 to, to 9 of, of the sower and the sowing of the seed. As Jesus speaks of that parable of the sower, on the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into the boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. As we sow the seed of the word of God in the hearts and lives of those about us, some will hear and respond. Some will believe and be saved. Some will reflect God's grace and glory and we will experience the joy of the harvester who comes with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. In Psalms 126, verse 6, we read, He who continually goes forth, wheat bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. We are to glorify God by good works. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
our Lord in the Sermon on the Mount said that we are to live as an example of what God can do in the hearts of those who obey Jesus Christ. You see that the believers in the Thessalonian church were glorifying God with their good works. They demonstrated works of faith, labours of love and great patience of hope. And by so working, they were glorifying God. And as I conclude, Paul said in Colossians 1, 27, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The indwelling Christ is the hope that God has for us to manifest his presence in the world. The presence of Christ in each of us is the only hope that the world has today for beholding God's glory and experiencing his loving presence. The Christ of Christmas came long ago, but he comes today to live in our hearts. The indwelling Christ is God's hope for revealing his presence through you. Christ in you is the basis for your hope for a home in God's final glory. That this Christmas time, when people want to take the Christ out of Christmas, when people want us not to mention Christ or call the name of Jesus, we have got to allow God to be glorified in us. Let people see the Christ of Christmas in us. Let them have a foretaste or a foresight of the glory of God. This Christmas season, let Jesus be seen and be made known in you. Let God's glory shine forth and don't allow anyone to shut you down. God bless you. Praise is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole Joy.